Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 368. BioBalance training for doctors in your area. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. You have an exciting announcement to make, and Mm -hmm. we're we're presenting this to the public today in this HealthCast. You've, You've been in practice for 15 years. You've written the book that is the seminal book for testosterone replacement in women. And you go to these medical conventions where doctors approach you and and the compounding pharmacies that you work with refer doctors Mm -hmm. to you Mm -hmm. for training about how you do what you do. And for quite some time, you've been too busy to entertain that or hear that. But now you've kind of gotten your head around the idea that that might not be a bad thing, in part because if people happen to, to go to your website, they'll see a map of the world that shows where all of your patients come from, all Mm -hmm. the different states. People fly into St. Louis from around the world to get hormone replacement therapy from you because you are the acknowledged expert. Several times a year. In it. And so one of the things that constantly happens is you get contacted by people who live in different areas of the country and saying, can you refer me to a physician in my area who does Mm -hmm. what you do? And you finally figured out a way to, to make that possible. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Right. So we're calling it uh, BioBalance uh, Training for Doctors in Your Area. Doctors who want to learn how it is that you do what you do, the specific mechanics mm-hmm. of it, uh, can come here and find out. So so, um, so there's always like, what is the problem that people can't just do this? Uh-huh. And yeah, can any doctor do it? Well... You have to have a good grasp of hormones, and you have to understand how hormones work and work together, or you have to be willing to learn that. So that's basic. So if you're a surgeon and you don't have any idea what any hormone does, then I have one type of training that might help you if, you're, if you're, you can get your mind around it and you're motivated to learn that. Right. But the natural person to be... Um, a hormone physician and do everything I do with hormone pellets, bioidentical hormones, and balancing all the hormones that interact, that that would be a family doctor or an OBGYN. Because family doctors and OBGYNs have a lot of training with women's hormones, and w- both, both practices or both specialties have training with men's hormones because both do some infertility generally and then of course family practice follows men on and has a knowledge of testosterone in general so so those two specialties lend themselves to this type of training so that that those are the doctors that i'm looking for and those are the doctors who could easily fit this into their practice alongside their practice or they could change over to this type of practice in many areas of the country that that are basically without this kind of doctor. Well, and there is a pent-up demand that mm-hmm. is almost bursting at the seams mm-hmm. for patients who have aged to the point where their natural hormone productions are declining and are therefore experiencing health adjustment downward. Uh, mm-hmm. issues that they'll have that that open them to opportunistic illnesses because they're older mm-hmm. and because they don't have the hormones that protected them from those opportunistic mm-hmm. illnesses that they had when they were younger. Mm-hmm. But the medical establishment in the United States has resisted being open to this treatment mm-hmm. for about 20 years in, in truthful and major cause because there was a study that was done 20, 17, 18 years ago Uh, called the Women's Health Initiative, that basically in its conclusion said, oh my gosh, hormone replacement therapy will cause you to have a heart attack, will cause you to get breast cancer, and in in, in all likelihood will cause an early death for you. So don't get it. And they they misanalyzed 
the data. They did. And they but, stopped the study, part of the study too soon. But what, so, so they cut off the study. They, they got the preliminary results, mm -hmm. misinterpreted them to the wrong conclusion, but it scared them. And, and uh, it scared all doctors. In service of protecting their patients, they went to the media and the media said the sky is falling. And so there were right. all these newspaper articles that came out. Because there were a lot of women who were getting hormone replacements. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a of all different types practice, right? Non bioidentical and bioidentical. Until, until that happened, mm -hmm. until that article, those articles were published, mm -hmm. and the news media said, "Don't do this; it'll kill you." And so, doctors who really looked at the research didn't just read the headlines, mm -hmm. didn't just hear the news stories. Looked at the research, said, "Wait a minute, that's not what this says." Mm -hmm. And so, they continued to offer hormone replacement therapy right? and to study it. And I did too. And you were one of those doctors. Right. So for the last 15 years, I've still been against the mainstream it. media presentation mm -hmm. about the dangers of hormone replacement therapy. You've been doing it. But all the while, all the while, all the, while, yeah. all the thousands of studies that came before that one study right. said it's safe. It helps you solve a lot of problems and um, symptoms that you're taking multiple medications for when you could just take estrogen and testosterone. It keeps you healthy. It keeps you young and physically active. And then there were lots of studies afterwards that everybody kept really hush-hush. The news media had put this out and said, it's terrible. And then are they going to go back and say, well, well, well there's these other studies that say it's really good for you. What they classically do is it comes out on the the top right. half of the newspaper in a 10-inch column and says, danger, this will kill you. Mm -hmm. And then when they say, oh, we made a mistake, the correction is on the back page of the newspaper in, in tiny print. It's called a retraction. Yeah. Retractions are always these teeny tiny little things so that somebody doesn't get sued. Right. And they, they use that as justification, but nobody reads them. Right. So that's the problem. So it protects them legally. So this one study, I mean, just to make it clear, there were thousands of studies before that said hormones for women were excellent and important and necessary. helped you and necessary. And then one study comes out, no one's taking them. And they kept making studies that showed that they're very important for women as we age, not to get osteoporosis or heart disease, or even living longer from, for every reason. So then just la a few weeks ago, we, we had, October the third. we had a study come out that was 18 years long. And they came out with the conclusion that yeah, the WHI study wasn't right. Mm -hmm. It was with the same data, but they continued the studies of the WHI onward for 18 years. And they found that women didn't die as early. They didn't get as much or they didn't get more breast cancer and they didn't get more heart disease. And what, question, what they said is it might even benefit that. It might even help you. What they did say <laughs> is it won't kill you. It doesn't increase your chances of getting breast cancer or heart disease and it won't. And the study was of over 28,000 women mm -hmm. who had had what's called long-term hormone replacement therapy, right. which is between three and seven years. So if you've been taking hormone replacements between three and seven years, the Women's Health Initiative study would say, oh my God, you're toast. This is going to come. Right. And I've been you're taking it 15 die. years. Right. So I mean, so you're definitely long term, but but they followed <laughs> these twenty eight thousand women mm -hmm. for. Uh, That's a long study. Yes, and a big study. And they said all cause mortality. Yeah. So there, there's no data out there that supports that it'll kill you. But there are still doctors in town. There are doctors around the country mm -hmm. that that have not gotten the news. That have not internalized uh, the news and readjusted their thinking about hormone replacement therapy. Right. But there are new doctors, young doctors. Your daughter is one uh -huh. who graduated from medical school in the last two years. Uh -huh. And she... No, residency in the last two years. Residency, I'm sorry. sorry. I, I don't know the technology She's family. She's family practice. She's a family practice doctor. And she accepts the arguments and the data and yeah. the information. Mm -hmm. And she practices hormone replacement therapy mm -hmm. as a family practitioner. Right. So there are new doctors out there that have more recent education based on more uh, scientifically supported data, less less news media uh, hysteria. And we're looking for those doctors. Mm -hmm. And if you have such a doctor, if you have a conversation with your physician, say, are you, where are you on hormone replacement, replacement therapy? What do you know about it? 
Are you open to it? Would you consider it? Are you interested in being a doctor who provides it? If they are interested, then they can now contact Dr. Moffin's office and arrange to come to town for a two-day shadowing. It's a very inexpensive uh, process in terms of the cost and in terms of the commitment. You can come and follow Dr. Sullivan and Dr. Maupin and their nurse practitioners around for two days in their office in, in the middle of a week. Mm-hmm. See the patients that they see with them, sit in on their consultations, look at their data, look at their procedures, learn how they do what they do. And how we put in pellets because we just use... You only use pellets. We only use pellets for estradiol and testosterone for mm-hmm. both men and women. So that is our method. And we find the reason that's our method is because it's the best method. It's the lowest risk and it's the healthiest. If they, if they put pellets so, in you instead of using a cream or a sublingual or a tablet or a gel, a gel what happens is you create a reserve, uh, an on-demand reserve inside the fat tissues of your hip that your body can access as you need those particular hormones. Right. And it will last four to six months, depending on if you're male or female. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to remember two or three times a day to put on a gel. Right. So we don't have a compliance problem. I don't have to worry about whether my patients, I used to have to worry way back when, before I did this, I'd worry about somebody not using their hormones. They call and go, it's not working. Yeah. Well, did you use it? Well, not really. Or I changed the, I changed what I did. And then I had one gal that took a three month supply of testosterone cream and applied it all over her body in a week. Well, she like me. And she's, know, if, it, if it works really well once, 10 times it works, 10 times better. A week later, after I wrote the prescription, she calls me. She goes, I want some more of that. I feel really good. Ah! But she had hair all over her. Yeah. You know, that, so, so following the instructions is really important. But when we use pellets, it, it is not only easier for you, you get it at certain times, then you forget about it. Right. And it's also something that is safer. It doesn't make you as hairy as other forms of testosterone It for women. It doesn't, or men too, because I've seen men from shots for years have come in and they look like, you know, apes. They have hair all over their bodies. Not I don't look all over their bodies, but all the areas that I can see um, are really covered in a, in a blanket of hair. So that plus the pellets actually lower LDL cholesterol, the bad one, lower inflammation. So that decreases your risk of heart disease. They also give you a steady state of testosterone. So you're not up and down. So you're not moody and you're not angry and you're not, I mean, a lot of the shots make guys unhappy and and irritable. Pellets make them calm and not angry. So it's a different it's a different form of testosterone, and it matters how you take testosterone. So that's the only way I do it, and that's what I, the, what I teach. What you've learned and advocate, years. yeah, because I used to do all that stuff when there weren't pellets. I didn't have the best treatment, mm-hmm. so I just tried everything, and none of them worked really well. So I have good experience and background in fifteen to twenty years of using all that other stuff, mm-hmm. and I just said forget it. When I got the when I got the pellets, the pellets were so much better. I said. I'm not offering this anymore. I'm just doing pellets. So that's what I teach. I teach how to put them in. I teach basically how to manage them by following us around on two full days of office. So Dr. Sullivan and I have office hours, would have office hours on opposite days, but you would then follow patients from consultation to insertion where we put the pellets in and then talk to patients about how, you know, what they need to tell the nurse practitioners, right. how we have our office set up. It's easier to learn when you're actually in a practice and doing this. And two days isn't a lot out of um, a, somebody's schedule mm-hmm. who's in an active office practice. So that would be something that that's the first way they can learn. We have other options for people who don't know anything about hormones. Or and, don't feel like they know enough. Or don't feel like they know enough to do this really in their practice. And they can do they can do the um, shadowing first and then come back for a more lecture oriented and shadowing procedure. Well so that and then we also have a, a option kind of like our treatment in for our patients. One size does n- never fits all. No. Everybody has a different need. So we are willing to reach out and uh, provide your training or your doctor's training 
any way they need it if they're really motivated to do this. Right. They can get the pieces that they discover for themselves that they need. If they have an interest and they think, well, I would be open to learning more about this and it might be helpful to my patients, I'll spend a couple of days in St. Louis and figure out how to do it and come home and do it. And some of them will be good enough to go. That's all they'll need. So, so here's another reason why I want to do this. I, I have so many, I, I have so many patients from other places mm -hmm. that have been to doctors who said they were pellet doctors, but really did, weren't well trained and didn't really, I mean, they went on the internet to figure out how to do this and they're even putting their pellets in wrong. That's the easiest part of this. Right. They're putting their pellets in the muscle instead of in fat. They hurt. They put them in the wrong part of their hip, which then damages nerves. I mean, you have to know what you're doing when you're doing this procedure. Right. It's very important to have somebody who does it all day long and does it right. It should be in the, if you're not getting your pellets in your upper outer quadrant of your, of your hip or in your love handles, if you're a man, they usually go in both then you're getting it in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. And so that your doctor may be winging it, but this isn't something you can wing. You have to be trained. Well, and then for those doctors that are not sure about their skill level or their informational base level, there is an additional training that is available to teach you more how to do that. But the, the primary reason that I would encourage doctors to consider coming to Dr. Maupin for training is her expertise in determining dosage and for problem solving. And the reason that, that matters is that there are disagreements. Again, as, as we started this conversation today, there are a lot of doctors out there practicing. And, and I don't know if you know, but the doctor population in America is aging. And so a lot of those doctors went to school a long time ago and they learned what they learned. And they've been repeating their, <laughs> their operational activities based on what they learned. With not a criticism. That's just but human But 30 nature. or 40 years ago and they don't really learn a lot well, of new stuff. But the information has changed. and Depends the, on the doctor. It, it does depend on the doctor. Uh, so one of the things that happens when you make a diagnosis to put testosterone mm -hmm. in somebody or, or give them thyroid or whatever mm -hmm. you're doing estrogen is that sometimes the blood tests that you rely on and the numbers that you look at are outside of the norms that other doctors have mm -hmm. come to expect when they look at a blood test. And so they may have a sort of shock reaction. Oh my God, you're too high here or too yeah. low here. What's she doing? Because they don't have the information. Right. And they, they believe, like I used to believe years ago, yeah. that everything that's on the lab test is actually healthy normal. Meaning, right. if the patient's in this range, then you are healthy in that area. Well, And they, they treat to the range. They try to and, get you in a, a and range. And if you believe that, okay. if you believe that, that you're in this range, the lab is... There's a lot of things that you need to interpret. You need to interpret what drugs the patient's on. You need to, because it's interpreted differently, especially thyroid tests. If you're on thyroid, you should have different normals that aren't even on that test right. than if you're off thyroid. And if you are um, on testosterone, those normals are little old lady normals. They're not normal for young, healthy women. So that's not healthy. And the worst of them is the growth hormone or the IGF-1 is growth hormone measurement. That lab says, oh. How many growth, how many IGF ones did we do today? Well, we're just going to, if you're outside this tiny little bell curve of what we did today, then you're abnormal, but everybody else is okay. Well, that's not true. There's a healthy normal for growth hormone. And that's what we're shooting for. Just because you tested a bunch of sick people and you fall in that range doesn't make you well. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's, but a lot of people don't understand that lab tests aren't healthy normals. They, they consider menopausal ranges of zero test or estrogen for women normal. Right. And that's not healthy. It's just average for your age. Right. So that's... that's but they're not necessarily... We're talking about a whole range of doctors. Mm -hmm. They don't necessarily know or specialize in the right. treatment of women of that age. Right. They're even, not... Even a lot of OBs. Mm -hmm. Because their focus and training is on delivering babies mm -hmm. and taking care of women who are of breeding age. Well, I used to believe that whatever was there on that normal that range was what, you were shooting for. was what I was shooting for. I mean, right. I never was told differently until I trained for this by Gino Tatera. And then I went on and trained in, you know, on and on with the, um, AMMG organization and they're, they're like a specialty organization and then A4M as well. So I, I've taken a lot of trainings to buff my knowledge all the time. We go to conferences. You go to training at least year. twice a year. But that's just to get the new nuances. Plus, you stay on to top build. of the journals that right. come out for three different specialties. Yeah, more. 
So, <laughs> so, so you yeah. know, but, and so the, our message, our point is not all doctors do this, but as a patient, if you are interested in hormone replacement therapy as a possibility for you or someone that you care about, male or female, you may want to have this conversation with your physician to say, where are you in the spectrum about this kind of treatment? And if they're opposed to it, you may want to consider talking to other doctors and find a doctor that's open to it. Because as you age, this is going to be something that you will want to consider. And you want to have a discussion with it, uh, about it with a physician that is knowledgeable and can give an informed response. So if you talk to a doctor that is open to that, but doesn't do it, and they think mm, that might be something in my area that, that I would want to provide, then they can contact Dr. Maupin's office. They can come to St. Louis for a minimal fee and shadow and with no real investment of money or time beyond just a couple of days of, of visiting with Dr. Maupin, they can get what they need to make a decision about whether or not this is something they want mm -hmm. to do. And we'd like to have doctors in other areas that do what we do. Right. So that we can uh, refer to them. So that we can refer to them so people don't have to travel so far. And uh, I mean, that's a concern for us. And that's something that we're trying to, I mean, we, we have several doctors we have trained that we refer to now yes. in several parts of the country, but we need more parts of the country. <laughs> and so we're looking for doctors who are like-minded, who, like who want people to be healthy and want a base basis of their new practice to be hormone replacement. And then preventive medicine on top of that, but balancing and replacing all the hormones that decrease with age. And what, what you pay for to obtain hormone replacement allows you to not pay for many different doctor's visits, many different prescriptions. They're, the cost trade-off, if, if you look, and the numbers change as time goes on, but if you look in our book, The Secret Female Hormone, there's actually a chart in the book that talks about the data that Dr. Maupin accumulated in her practice of savings for patients who came off of medicines and didn't have doctor's visits mm -hmm. because they were on hormone replacements, they no longer needed those things. And it, so, the savings were greater than the cost of the pellet treatment. Right. So, so it, it really is efficient, but being healthy is really efficient. Which is the primary goal. Which is the goal. So thank you for listening and think about talking to your doctor. Suggest that if they are not familiar with Dr. Maupin, they look at her book. It's available on Amazon. Uh, it's called The Secret Female Hormone by Dr. Kathy Maupin. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.